the first sub area preparation first of all wudu ablution and again this is one of the areas that people keep saying muslims emphasize outwardly cleanliness and just washing and splashing water superficial and the superficial is their own understanding really because wudu is not just cleaning the body while cleaning the body itself is a virtue but as Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in the Quran, Inna Allah yuhibbu tawabin wa yuhibbu mutatahirin. Allah loves those who constantly go back to Him in repentance and loves those who keep themselves clean. And clean here applies both to physical cleanliness and spiritual cleanliness. To emphasize that concept, we find that the Prophet وسلم, explains that whenever the person goes to make ablution, that whenever he washes his hand these or face or arms the sins will be washed away so it's a remembrance of cleanliness rather than just a ritual of splashing water on one's body secondly the necessity of having a modest and clean dress is quite interesting too because it teaches the person uh, who have to perform the prayer five times every day about the virtue of haya, the sense of shame and the sense of decency and proper cover. It's not just for the prayers. It's something that one should get used to uh, throughout his life. And that's why my suggestion to many of my respected sisters that I have noted uh, in many Islamic centers that whenever azan is made, the dubatta or the cover comes over the head. Once uh, the prayer is finished, everything back uh, to normal. So actually, that seemed to indicate that the lesson from salah seemed to be missing. So if we have the, uh, that sense of decency before Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, we should have it also before other people. So it's a sort of training to get us used to that virtue that seemed to be sorely missing uh, these days. And then you have the... Uh, modesty or the cleanliness uh, of the place but here again we find the emphasis in the Quran uh, and Sunnah on essence rather than appearance because cleanliness of place does not mean uh, an expensive uh, silk Persian carpet that cost a few thousand I, I'll give you the reason why I'm saying that it simply means clean emphasis on cleanliness not just trappings of life that's why a, a clean place for the prayer in Islam is defined as any place it could be sand it could be earth even but clean there is no uh, you know impurity on it the Prophet ﷺ and his Sahaba were praying in a masjid where they were praying on pebbles hasa and still it was clean the reason I'm emphasizing this is that uh, as the Prophet ﷺ predicted that he discouraged people to have too much decoration of the masjids. And he said, by way of prophecy, that you will do the same thing as Jews and Christians did in their temple and churches, decorations. Now, we're not saying that a masjid should not look nice and should be clean and functional. But oftentimes, lots of money is uh, directed towards the trappings and less to activities. So you get buildings, but no activity. That's uh, this question about where our priorities lie and where they should lie. Now, the question of Qibla. Of course, the immediate thought that comes to your mind, why all Muslims should direct towards the Qibla, you say, all right, because this is the first house on earth that symbolizes monotheism built by Ibrahim السلام, before any other temple on earth, Jerusalem or elsewhere. That's fine. But it is also a symbol of unity of all Muslims where you get a center and you get circles all around, uh, all around the world. Uh, the concept of Qibla also, direction, is not just for Salah, that a Muslim should have Qibla, a Muslim should always have a sense or purpose in life so it's much more than salah, they, to teach us to have a focus and direction in whatever activities we are doing. And then you get to the times, timing of the prayer in the five uh, periods during the day. 
This is quite interesting also because it keeps the person in constant remembrance and refreshment throughout the day. Beginning the day with the remembrance of Allah. Uh, halfway in the day when everybody is busy and so on, in the midst of all work, you don't let uh, your obsession with work take you away from remembrance of Allah. So you stop it and pray. Uh, Mid-afternoon, again, when you get into the bustle of activities or close to the end, you do it. When the sun sets and the change takes place between day and night, a remembrance of the power of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and his bounty, uh, the night prayer. So the timing itself is good. In addition to the fact that it disciplined the Muslim, that the, there are certain times that you have to observe to be more punctual. But unfortunately, what we find among Muslims, because many uh, have uh, fallen into the traps of ritualism, <laughs> ritualism, but that's not Islam, that's what Muslims are doing, that we tend to be very lax. Uh, when we go to work, we could be very punctual on time. When you have an Islamic function, malish. And that's why like uh, one brother was telling me that it looks like uh, many Muslims, unlike the teaching of Islam, they run their uh, affairs according to the IBM. I for inshallah, Allah God willing, B for Bukra, tomorrow, come tomorrow, and M for Ma'alish, it's okay. IBM, inshallah, Bukra, Ma'alish. But that's not the teaching of Islam. Some people talk about uh, um, Muslim, but not Islamic. Muslim standard time, M MST. Muslim standard, standard time, which means one hour late or more. But that's not Islamic standard time. Which I, Actually, if we really comprehend the essence of Salah, not the ritual of it, we wouldn't behave like that. It would train us to improve on our uh, actions. And that's why also the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam likens the prayers to someone who has a rivulet running by his four steps and he goes five times every day to wash that there will be no dirt, no uncleanness. So as it applies to the physical body, it should apply also to our own thinking, behavior and actions.